I've looked at quite a few iPhone accessories over the last couple of years, things that add battery capacity or maybe more storage, but I've never seen an iPhone case quite like this one. To start this off, a few years ago I reviewed a phone called the Yotaphone. Essentially it's a relatively low powered device, but on the other side of it you have an e-ink screen, you have an e-reader but this is built into the phone. I've also used the Kindle a lot over the years, but as you may notice, it's dead at the moment because I just, it's kind of inconvenient to have to carry a second device. So how do you make it so that you can use the phone that you wanna use, but still get that e-ink screen? That's where this product comes into the picture. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the Oaxus Ink Case i7, the second screen for your iPhone 7. Before we get started, let me remind you though, the company did send me out this product for free for review and they are also compensating me for providing my time and for doing the video. But the opinions that I express here are my own. So opening up the box, first up you're gonna see a small white box contained inside of it. That contains the quick start guide, which has quite a bit of information showing you all the different things that you can do with the case. You'll also find the proprietary magnetic USB charging cable for the case, and of course the case itself. Taking a first glance at the case, you can see it's designed specifically for the iPhone 7. It has a 4.3 inch e-ink display on the back of it, coming in at 480 by 800 resolution, which is about 217 DPI. It has Bluetooth 4 BLE built into it, so it can wirelessly receive content from the phone. There's also one tactile button down at the bottom for power, three touch buttons, left, right, and select. It has a built-in 460 milliamp hour battery and supposedly five days of standby time. That's not to say it's gonna last five solid days if you're sitting there constantly changing things, but if you just don't touch it and leave it alone, it's supposed to work for five days straight. Now diving a little further into it, to use the case, you're actually gonna have to install the Ink Case app on your iPhone 7. Once you go through all the setup process and everything, pair the phone up to the case, it actually takes care of all of that through the app for you. Just select the device from the devices list. But you'll see on the main screen of the app, we have Reader, Photos, Read it later, widgets, and again, my ink case. From Reader, this is where you have your ebooks. You can push new ebooks to the device by sending them to yourself in an email or by sending them over using iTunes and then using the sharing capability to actually push them into the reader. Once you have one of these files here, of course, you just click on it, say send to ink case, and it's gonna send it right over. To get to the reader from any screen, you just double tap on the select button, go over to Reader, the one that looks like a little book, and hit select and it's gonna go into whatever book you have selected last. So if you go ahead and tap select again, you can either pick a different place inside of the book, go left or right to go up and down, so we can go over to Common Sense by Thomas Paine and hit select, and it gives you the option to select what part of the book you wanna go into, and after just a second there, it switched over. So now we're in a different book. If we hit the right arrow, we'll go to the next page, continuing on the next page and so on and so forth, left arrow to go back pages, hit the select button again, and you can again select whatever you wanna see. Coming back over to the app though, the next section you can look at is photos. Looking up here at the top, you can see all the photos that do come pre-provided for the case, a bunch of things about having a second screen, keep calm and ink on, second screen your phone, all sorts of things like that. But you can also go from your photo album. So if I were to choose a photo of my son, for example, We'll just pick this one right here. You see that it makes it grayscale for you here and automatically crops it to fit the case. Hit save and it's gonna go ahead and save it for you. From here, you can do further cropping. You can add filters to it to make it brighter or darker or whatever else you want. You can change the orientation or add text to it. So if I wanted to, I could add some text in here that just says LOL and put it wherever you want. Shrink it by doing a pinch, drag it around to wherever you want it on here. And when you're done, hit save, save again. And there it is in the photos list. If I go ahead and tap on this and hit send to ink case, it's sending it over to the case. It's just gonna take a couple of seconds, not long at all realistically. And then once it's done, there we go. It just switched over to it on the back. It also, in doing so, switched over to the photo mode, which you can get back to again by double tapping the select button and choosing photos from the top here. If you wanted to go back to the book you were reading though, double tap select, go over to the book and hit okay. But since we're in images, we'll just stay here. And you can see it does come loaded with a selection of photos as well. If I hit right, it's gonna switch over to some of these other ink case photos. And then if you find one that you don't want, like I, let's just say I don't want this one, hold the select button on it. It's gonna pop up and give you the trash can. Hit left to get over to the check mark, select to get it to go away. And then we're just back to whatever else. And eventually back to the photo of my son. The next section is called Read Later. Inside of the app, there's the ability to connect to Pocket. If you use the Pocket service to save things to be read later, it can go ahead and import those for you. Otherwise, you can hit the plus button up there to add new things to it. Or if you're on anything else on your phone, like if I go over to Twitter, for example, there's an article here about Casey Neistat revealing his plans at CNN. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And as it loads up, I can hit the arrow up here, the share arrow, and say more. And then once it pops up here, it says ink case. This option I had to actually come in and enable, but there it is, ink case. 
Now if I go ahead and select ink case, it's saving it, and now it's saved to the ink case. That didn't take any time at all. And from there, you should be able to just go back over to the case itself. I did a quick refresh on this, and you can see here at the top, Web Video Star Casey Neistat. And then if you flip it over, it switched itself over to the Read It Later section. If I hit Select on this article that I was reading, I can go up to this article that I just saved and hit Select and it switches over to that. So I can read it later on an e-ink screen without having to use any of the screen power and battery life of my phone. The next section is called widgets. If I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna give you a bunch of info about your upcoming events and weather, the distance that you've covered today, reminders. Keep in mind, it will only give you reminder information if you've marked it as a priority item inside of your reminders on the phone. But again, if I come back to the back side of the case, double tap the select button and go over to the widgets page, which looks like a little puzzle piece, it's gonna load it all up for me. Gives me all the same stuff we just saw on the other side. I can hit left and right to switch the face so it'll look a little different on this layout. Hit it again, we go to a clock, and then again back to this main screen. This is sort of a good overall home screen kind of thing in my opinion. And the last section of the app to take a look at is the My Ink Case section. This is actually where you're gonna do the pairing again. You can set the auto power off for a certain amount of time. You can change your reader settings. If the text was too big or too small for you, you can do that. You can change the alignment and the line spacing here. You can log in and log out of Twitter here and Pocket here, because I forgot to mention that. Under Photos, if I go ahead and select Twitter, it's gonna allow me to select photos from Twitter to use as the background for the case. You can also just click the photo button here and take a photo if you're so inclined. Now the good thing is, as you can see in here, I'm under some decently bright studio lights and it's very easy to see what this says. And of course, just tapping the pages, I can very easily read what's on the pages. You can probably see it very well through this overhead camera. But the good thing about it being an e-ink screen as opposed to using your main phone screen for something like this is, when you take it outdoors, you don't have to worry about it. E-ink is so easy to read when you're outdoors in sunlight, take it out to the beach or whatever, and you don't have to worry about not being able to read what's on your screen. And actually for someone like myself, I have polarized sunglasses, so a lot of the phones that I use, I have issues with angles and whatnot seeing my phone screen don't have to worry about that with this rear-facing screen. And on top of it, because it is an actual case, it does provide a little bit of an extra layer of drop protection. So it's not just a pretty face you put on the back of the phone, it's actually got some functionality to it beyond the screen. And the screen itself, according to their site, says that it's a 9H hardness, which is about the same hardness as the screen on your phone, so it should help resist scratches that way. And I will say, I'm gonna be going on vacation here in a few weeks, and I've been thinking about taking my Kindle and loading it up with books and whatnot, but now I may not have to. And that's where I'm gonna wrap things up for today. This is available over on their website for about 129 bucks. And if you have an older iPhone, the iPhone 6, they actually have one available for that as well. But so far, I've been a very big fan of this thing. It's got an awful lot of functionality built into it, and it gives you that little bit of extra something you didn't have before. So let me know what you think of it down in the comment section below. Links to where you can find it, again, can be found down there as well. Thanks again to the company for sending this out for me to take a look at, as well as sponsoring this video. Thanks to you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like button if you liked it, and subscribe to receive all the videos I make as soon as they become available. And I'll see you again next time.